So my session is about a uh, state of hooking into Drupal. There are talks that uh, you know we are slightly slowly uh, moving from hooks, the procedural hook system to object oriented hook system uh, that we have uh, technically uh, you know borrowed from Symphony, I would say. Uh, we would be using a Symphony 2 event dispatcher component for hooks in Drupal. Uh, so we're already on the track. Uh, uh, how soon we can get there would uh, mainly depend on the uh, effort and prioritization of this thing by the community. So there are many other more important and uh, I would say, uh, yeah, important issues that need to be taken care of right now. So this may not get that much of an importance, but it surely uh, will get there. We would. Uh, eventually have the uh, traditional hook system replaced with the object-oriented event system. So uh, uh, be brief intro uh, about who I am. Uh, my name is Nidai Smile Shah. I uh, am a developer at Acquia. It's been two years now that I've been with Acquia. Uh, I left college and straight joined Acquia. Uh, this is my contact info. Uh, I come from a beautiful place. It's Kashmir in South Asia. So I, uh, I encourage you to uh, visit us, read about it. Uh, we have a Drupal community, Drupal Kashmir as well. Uh, Google it and uh, find ways you can come and uh, contribute. So an overview into uh, what I am going to be talking about. Uh, Everything should be pretty simple. Uh, we'd basically be uh, looking into uh, what hooks are and uh, oh, why they were used and when do we use hooks and what for. Uh, then we'd move to a state where we are currently. Uh, what, sorry, something else. Yeah, what's up? What's up with hooks and what about events? Since we are using uh, events for some things in Drupal 8, uh, we'd be looking at uh, how we can do that for our custom things and uh, what all we can achieve with events right now and where we are still using hooks in D8. Then we'd uh, also be exploring a bit about uh, Symphony Event Dispatcher, uh, you know, basically the same thing, uh, how we can, not sure what's wrong how we can uh, use and explore the Symphony Event Dispatcher component with D8. And then, as I mentioned, we are not yet there. Uh, there are still, uh, hooks are still there in D8. Then if you uh, really don't like Symphony or you don't like uh, object-oriented for uh, reasons I cannot imagine, then you can still uh, use hooks in D8. Uh, we'd be looking at that as well. So mainly, uh, Transition from uh, Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 has been interesting. Uh, there have been a lot of changes for developers, basically. Uh, it has, uh, I think, uh, this talk is, uh, you know, the benefits of moving from Symphony Event Dispatcher, sorry, moving from hooks to Event Dispatcher component is more about developer experience. So there are not too many, uh, uh, you know, benefits on the uh, user front. Uh, not, I guess, we cannot think of any, you know, performance reasons or something like that. But uh, certainly developer experience has, ex you know, enhanced in a way. So uh, Drupal 7 to Drupal 8 journey has been a procedural to object-oriented way. We have imported our used Symphony components, dependency injection, service container, and uh, event dispatcher component. Uh, code has been a lot of, you know, uh, more modular in a way. Drupal itself is a mod modular uh, system. But now we have uh, sort of moved from making Drupal modular to making our modules modular. And eventually we are now writing cleaner code and we have enhanced developer experience as a result. So some things uh, that have changed are like uh, we have uh, dependency injection for core services. We have event subscribers for hooks. We can now write portable code with the introduction of services and with the introduction of dependency injection, we can use other people's code. We don't have to worry about writing our 
owns you know stuff complex stuff there are a lot of uh, you know non drupal stuff non drupal people who have created so many awesome things that we can simply use with services now uh, in our systems we can uh, as i said use code from somewhere else and unlike drupal uh, hooks we can now write uh, events that can be uh, you know unit tested so we can have objects and we can have mocked objects mock dependencies which can help us write better unit tests which certainly wasn't possible with drupal 7 so we'd be starting with looking into hooks a bit uh, where we have come from what purpose did hooks serve and uh, how they were executed so we could then compare it with event dispatcher component so this is exactly i was while researching about this talk i was uh, going through a uh, previous talks as well so there was a talk by kim pepper in uh, drupal con asia so he mentioned this particular uh, comment by dries in 2000 when he was you know when he started this hook system the concept of hook system uh, the idea i think is to you know decouple components uh, to be able to sort of uh, uh, through, our, through the life cycle of the program to be able to uh, run our custom code, run certain snippets of code at certain stages or at certain events, um, to be able to decouple our uh, event triggering mechanism uh, from the event listeners. So to make them separate components, that is the basic idea of the uh, hook system that hook system was started with. So to extend, uh, you know, to extend your functionality, uh, your custom module would simply uh, need to implement a hook. And when uh, Drupal wishes to allow intervention, uh, like when core wishes to allow inter intervention, or when you as a module developer want other module developers to intervene into your code or to, or to extend your functionality, you'd declare a hook and then the other module developers can uh, hook into your module or we can hook into core by implementing those hooks. So um, uh, hooks are basically uh, uh, discovered uh, in the module file. They are triggered by a naming convention mechanism. Uh, you basically uh, declare a name and then you know prepend it with your module name, and then whenever whichever module calls your function name, calls that uh, calls a func implements a function with that name, prepends it with their module name. Drupal will call it. We we'll look into uh, how that happens and how it's happening now. <coughs> so basically, uh, there are uh, many types of hooks. Uh, well, there is not a clear, uh, you know, classification of hooks done anywhere. Uh, but I've tried to, you know, uh, you know, generalize a bit. Info hooks, which are used to declare metadata, uh, as you can, you know, remember, we have hook. We used to have hook block info and hook block. Uh, view uh, th like things um, so those info hooks i think now we have uh, gotten rid of them in d8 we have uh, sort of uh, removed all the info hooks and this talk is mainly going to be about alter hooks which were a common way to sort of uh, you know let uh, module developers to uh, extend your functionality or in a way alter your data whatever data you were able to you know you had within your system and then if you wanted to if you wanted other module developers to intervene into your code or change that data you used to uh, have alter hooks a uh, fine one fine example could be a form alter wherein you could you had a form array and then you were able to you know you you were able to hook into other people's forms and you were able to let mo other module developers hook into your forms so the way uh, we can create hooks is uh, we have to decide a hook name and then we in our modules and this is what core is also doing module invoke all this is a famous function uh, this is how hooks get executed uh, what we need to do is module invoke all name so whenever the we just if we have a hook you know we decide on something some name we have hook whatever so if we call module invoke all it would go it would find all the enabled modules in your system and call them call all of those implemented functions 
module invoke all would find all the enabled module uh, enabled modules of your site and then execute all those functions but if you want to execute a particular uh, execute your hook from a particular module then you would need to call module invoke uh, then module name and name this is basically what's going on in d7 or what i can say what used to go on in d7 there's also a drupal alter that i was talking about you would basically need to do the same thing describe you know uh, sort of decide your hook name that would be my data and then you would pass in an array of uh, data that you would want uh, the users or developers to alter then the uh, users would uh, implement hook my data alter and then they would get this data array as an argument and then they could uh, change that this is how uh, the naming convention mechanism that i was talking about earlier this is how a d7 does it the hook system if you can uh, you know see the return uh, so, sorry return call user funk array basically we are uh, you know uh, deciding you know creating the function name here module prepending it with the module name and then a hyphen and then your hook name and then drupal is calling all those functions and providing it with arguments similarly with drupal alter as well we are just dollar hook and the dollar type is your module name and then sorry dollar type is your hook name that you pass in that you would pass in here my data and then uh, alter would be appended to it and then it would be passed in your data array uh, an interesting thing uh, would be uh, was to you know uh, manage the order of execution of your hooks in d7 so again uh, the what d drupal used to do is use its own hook system to decide the order of execution of its hooks so we used to create a, a drupal alter module implements and then pass in the array of implementation array of the hooks or you know this implementation array uh, uh, has it has all the hooks mentioned in it keyed by the module name so basically if you wanted to alter the execution if you wanted your module to uh, your a hook from your module to run before another module so you would go to this array you would implement this hook module implements and you would uh, unset your module unset your unset the element you know keyed by your module name and then you would append it to the last so that your module execute your the hook from your module gets executed last so the state uh, this would be mainly about where we are all the info hooks are gone uh info hooks are replaced with either annotations or yaml files as you can see in hook block info we have an uh, annotation block that replaces the uh, hook block info uh hook in it hook exit hook boot are gone alter hooks are still there uh form alters and other alters they will be uh with are likely to be re replaced with event listeners i can say there are some ddoto issues that uh, you know have these conversations going on to prioritize this uh, you know transition from a uh, hook system to event system eventually but then that would be up to the uh, you know effort that community gives and uh, the progress of those issue queues uh, we can you know that way we can uh, i think you know get an answer to when uh, we would be able to finally replace the hook system with the event dispatcher component what's wrong and why do we need to change from a uh, hooks so basically a uh, hook block info uh block hooks are a perfect example of uh, you know to analyze what's wrong so we have four block hooks info view configure and save uh whenever we want to declare a block we have these two required hooks hook block info and hook block view but then out of these four hooks you know we are you know it's not clear as to what's really required to implement a you know to declare your own block which is uh, something that we have managed to uh, do away with in d8 we have a uh, we have a block interface uh 
blocks are being basic, basically managed by plugins in D8. We have a block interface and then we have build array if you want to that would dis, uh, determine the output of the blog. And we, if you need a configuration form of your blog, then you have this fu function within your interface block form within your the block base object and uh, you have this submit function as well for your blog form. Um, also, uh, it's always you know preferred for a better developer experience to have object-oriented code. That way your code uh, is, you know, as I already said, remains highly modular and uh, uh, we are able to uh, write unit tests we are able to better decouple our components. Uh, suppose if you have a form submit function, and if you want to do uh, so many things with your uh, with the collected data from your form, you want to email them to someone, you want to save them to database, you don't have to worry about uh, how to get the database connection and how to store that to the how to store that value to the database actually. And with uh, you know object oriented with this decoupling possible now, you don't have to worry about managing your uh, mailer or something. You don't have to ma uh, worry about how we can email that to only thing with only thing you uh, need to worry about is your form getting submitted. Your submit handler only needs to worry about submitting your form. So that basically gives us better code reuse as well. We don't have to duplicate uh, duplicate code basically. We have so many hooks that are, uh, you know, eventually doing the same things. So once we have uh, decided on some basic configuration, we can you know reuse the code by extending our objects and stuff. And also we can, you know, uh, we have uh, with object oriented, we can mock our tests. So we can mock our objects and then give better room for uh, unit tests as well. So what, uh, there's uh, some simple con uh, comparison between events and hooks. Events are obviously object oriented, easy to uh, write, extensible code. Um, and one thing that was not possible, clearly not possible with uh, D7 hooks was that, or D8 hooks as well, was to stop propagation of a, of a particular event uh, from going further. You, you had no control over, you know, I'm deciding on when to stop a uh, hook implementation. So we were not able to fire a hook twice for some reasons. I mean, if we ever need to fire, an, uh, fire a hook twice, we are not able to do that. Now with events, we can do that. And we have loosely coupled uh, implementation of uh, event system now, the reusability and also services. Uh, with the inclusion of services and object-oriented code, uh, we can now inject services into our uh, event handlers, into our event dispatchers, and even into our event listeners. And we could, you know, uh, uh, sort of explore the possibilities with uh, about what we could achieve with that. Um, do we have any questions so far? No. Events. Uh, moving to the event section. Uh, an event uh, is an action uh, or an occurrence recognized by a software uh, and handled by a software. So this is a basic, I think, a simpler definition of defining events. The concept is, I think, uh, same as that of hook system, but as I said, uh, uh, with a, a better developer experience now, uh, we have this event system. So events are uh, part of uh, uh, the Symphony framework, Symphony 2 component. Uh, they allow for different components of the system to interact with, interact and communicate with each other. Object-oriented way of interaction with core and your uh, custom modules, I would say. Basically, events are an implementation of uh, events or hooks, I can say as well, are an implementation of a mediator pattern that I may be exp that I would be explaining further. Uh, and we have con Drupal basically uses uh, the container revere dispatcher. That means your event dispatcher are always seen through your container. So basically you have access to all the core services that you can uh, you know, instantiate with the help of the container. So as I said, again, better code, ext code extensibility and uh, with the use of services within the events, we can uh, do wonders with 
this event subscriber uh, sort of event dispatcher component so the mediator pattern uh, i think this is a perfect example of uh, decoupling, decoupling we could achieve with the events suppose we have this uh, you know radar thing at uh, the airports and your airplanes uh, continuously landing and taking off they do not need to interact with each other they do not need to you know check in which plane is landing and which plane is taking off and to avoid collisions and stuff they uh, only have to interact with the main radar and then the radar decides uh, has a function to decide on which one to you know which plane could uh, land and which plane can take off at a particular time so the intent of a uh, mediator pattern is to encapsulate uh, how a set of objects interact and to basically uh, decouple them from each other uh, that uh, they uh, that a particular object has a defined functionality uh, that an airplane i would say has a functionality of taking off or landing it doesn't have to worry about if it may collide with another plane or something uh so we uh, now i guess look into creating and uh, subscribing to events how uh, we can subscribe to uh, already exposed or already ex already fired events and how we can create our own uh, events that other modules can subscribe to so what we need is uh, the context i think wherein uh, we can decide that i have an array or i am at a particular stage in a uh, module or in a program and i want other module developers to intervene into my system so we need the basic logic wherein we can decide i need to fire an event for this then we basically dispatch the event and then other modules can listen to that event and do something about it so how do we uh, listen or subscribe to an event basically uh, in drupal we have uh, the symphony event uh, subscriber interface in your subscriber class we basically have to uh, implement that interface implement this interface in our subscriber class the event subscriber event event subscriber interface uh, forces our uh, subscriber class to implement the get subscribed events method which basically uh, returns the uh, you know array uh, of all the events that this mod that this subscriber is subscribing to and the with the callables php callables that uh, would execute once the event is fired then we need to write those callables ex uh, obviously uh, and you know to extend the functionality is wrong with it then we also need to uh, declare this the event subscriber as a service so uh, the container uh, could uh, you know instantiate it automatically this is the event sorry this is the event subscriber interface uh, this is straight from the core so i have tried to maintain that thing uh, basically it forces the uh, you know uh, if you are implementing your interface it forces the subscriber class to implement this get subscribed event uh, method and uh, this is uh, from the config factory uh, subscriber class from core as well it is basically subscribing to events con uh, events uh, config events save and config events delete so uh, we have this events array uh, keyed by the uh, constant that represents the event and uh, basically we have uh, the on save on config save and on config delete callables that would get executed when this event is fired by the config factory then also we have this uh, uh, event subscriber basically we have our event subscriber config factory that implements event subscriber interface we now need to uh, uh so declare our config factory subscriber class as a service so how do we do that in d8 is we have to tag uh, this class with a tag name event subscriber that is how drupal comes to know uh that this class is an event subscriber we can also uh 
have a using you know exploring uh, the dependency injection we can also have a uh, uh, services injected into our uh, event subscribers so this is how we do it suppose uh, i have my custom module and i have uh, declared a service you know that is subscribing to some event and i would uh, declare this arguments array wherein mm -hmm. i would uh, you know inject the logger factory into my event subscriber So then the, uh, we need to obviously implement the uh, callable to do something to about the event that we are, uh, you know, subscribing to. Uh, suppose we have, uh, you know, I have my own, uh, in a mo custom module, I have this class that is basically a subscriber class, alter response that implements event subscriber. It is returning, it is subscribing to the kernel event request that is fired at every request. Uh, and it expects it to, uh, you know, call the logging demo function whenever that event is fired. We need to give the implementation of that function, logging demo. Uh, this, uh, whatever uh, the callable that we are implementing would receive the event object as a parameter by default. So as an argument by default. So uh, this uh, kernel event request is a get response event. It is basically an object of this class. So our uh, custom, uh, you know, this callable gets the, the get response event object uh, as a argument. So uh, the or order of execution is simple in uh, event dis event dispatcher component uh, as compared to Drupal hooks. So what you what we require to do is uh, this. Uh, array uh, whatever this array that we return from the get subscribed events takes in as the you know parameter a priority parameter so the higher the priority uh, the you know <coughs> events that have a higher priority that get executed sorry callables that have uh, subscribers that have a higher priority get executed first and those that have lower priority get executed get executed afterwards so uh, summing up the listening pr uh, process, we have uh, we define a service in our module, tag it with event subscriber. That is how Drupal comes to know about our event subscriber. We define a class for our subscriber uh, or a subscriber service that is that has to implement event subscriber interface. Then we implement the get subscribed events from the uh, event subscriber interface and then return a list of all the events that we are subscribing to and w what all methods and with what priorities they should get executed. And then we uh, <coughs> obviously write those methods, write those callables that we want to execute once the event is fired. Now we'd be uh, moving to dispatching, uh, dispatching process, how we uh, can create our own events and how uh, based on some context we can dispatch or fire that event. Static event class. Uh, this is from the so, you know this is from the Symphony event dispatcher component. Basically, uh, the, seven, the static event class does nothing. It only uh, assigns a, a special constant for your event so that developers can know better know what the event is all about. So it's not a mandatory thing to have this uh, event class, but for a better developer experience, it is always recommended. Suppose I have this kernel events class from uh, Symphony. Uh, it uh, has constants for all the events that it exposes. Uh, constant request is kernel request that basically fires on every request. Similarly with exception and view and controller and others. And then our event class. This is the event class that uh, Symphony exposes. Uh, we have uh, we don't have much here as well. So, uh, you know, developers could extend this class and, uh, you know, extend their functionality as required as depending upon whatever the use case is. This event class has a, a, has a property, propagation stop, that decides, you know, that determines if the event is currently running or not. Uh, and also, is propagation stopped? This would be, you know, this would be a getter function for that property and then the stop propagation. There are other two uh, more methods 
that belong to this class that are deprecated now that would be get dispatcher and set dispatcher and the base event class is uh, you know provided uh, by event dispatcher component is deliberate deliberately empty to allow the module developers to you know uh, extend it and uh, uh, you know depending upon whatever the case is uh, implement it accordingly so how we uh, extend this generic event class we have our own event class suppose uh, i have to uh, dispatch an event i have to create my own event i would be uh, you know first i would be creating the uh, general event class to determine uh, the constants for my events then i would be extending the uh, extending the event class with you know extending my sorry extending my own class with this event class and uh, i would have you know suppose i have this event class i have created this event class that would get a configuration object from drupal 8 it would get uh, you know and be able to alter this configuration uh, in you know in particular context dispatching our event so uh, first getting the service event dispatcher from drupal and then i would be create instantiating my event object and passing in the config uh, object that i would be getting in whatever con uh, context i am in then uh, to dispatch the event i have the uh, i have a method uh, dispatch that is from the dispatcher event dispatcher component what i need to pass into this dispatcher is uh, is the event name or either the event name or the constant that i have defined in my event class and the event object so then i can you know uh, alter the data once i'm once i've subscribed to this event i can alter the data in the subscriber of this event and then get the data back from the event object from the subscriber object that is uh, you know by these methods if we have setters and getters in our event uh, you know event class we can get the configuration back so the uh, whole process of dispatching the event uh, Uh, would be summed up like this to dispatch an event we have to basically uh, call the dispatch function and pass it uh, pass into it uh, our the name of the event and uh, our event object so the first argument uh, obviously is a unique event name or a constant that we should be defining in a separate uh, stat static class the second argument is obviously the event object we would need to uh, extend this class into our own custom event class so we can you know provide our own functionality to you know that we we by which we can extend the functionality that the core provides so basically this is a simple dispatcher uh, we have other dispatchers and listeners as well we have uh, the gen event object that has be the you know the dispatch function the most important function dispatch we also have generic event object from symphony uh, which has certain functionalities uh, we also have a container event a container aware event dispatcher uh, basically this uh, allows us to you know use services within our events and event listeners event dispatcher events event dispatcher aware events and event dispatcher aware listeners so basically this would be having an event dispatcher uh, having an event dispatcher and having event listeners which have access to the event dispatcher so we'd be able to uh, dispatch uh, some more events within our dispatcher or we'd be able to dispatch more events within our lis uh, listeners so you know to have better extensibility of our code so what's happening currently in core we have we don't have too many events that are fired for things uh we have config events delete uh, import save and rename which are fired on when a configuration event a configuration object is deleted imported uh saved or renamed we have entity type events field storation field storage definition events console events we have kernel events controller uh, exception request response terminate and view the exception event would fire when we have an uncaught exception for a request uh request event fires when we have uh, fires for every request 
when we have a response delivered to the browser, we have this response event fired. When the uh, when a request is terminated, uh, terminate event fires. Uh, there's one. Uh, there's also one uh, special event kernel event view that is fired when we when the response is not an is not a response object when uh, we can have a responses to requests as render arrays as well. So when the uh, response is not a response object, kernel event view gets fired. We also have migrate events, map delete, uh, whenever an entry from map is deleted, map save, whenever an entry is made into the map, uh, post import that runs after the import process is over, uh, post rollback simply runs after the rollback, uh, sim uh, similarly, post row delete and post row save. We also have a routing events. Uh, routing event, uh, you know, alter lets module developers to you know alter the uh, routes or controllers for requests. So, with this, uh, you know, with this being said, uh, we still have hooks in D8, and we would basically look into how D8 is doing it, uh, how D8 is, you know letting module developers uh, expose their hooks and how D8 is exposing its hooks and how uh, we can you know still expose our hooks if need be. So what about hooks in D8? Some are gone uh, and some are still there. I think uh, most of the uh, alter hooks are still there which we should be replacing with uh, the event dispatcher component. Uh, some hooks are gone. Uh, there is no hook in it there is no hook boot there is no hook exit so one way we could implement hook in it in uh, you know we could uh, achieve the same functionality in d8 would be to implement would be to subscribe to kernel event request i would say and then that way we would be achieving the same functionality similarly uh, hook ex hook exit would be we would be we can subscribe to kernel event terminate as well uh, hooks in d8 this is uh, the code uh, chunk I have pasted from the user module file, uh, mo sorry, the dot module file from the user module. Uh, we have uh, the uh, we have a function invoke all simple, just like what we had in uh, D7, the invoke module invoke all file. We have a module handler class, module handler object, which has this mod invoke all function. So basically, what we are doing here is. Uh, we uh, are exposing a hook user login and passing in and passing the user account into it so that the uh, so that other developers could hook into it by implementing hook user login so how this uh, invoke function is doing it it's basically the same thing in uh, the function naming me mechanism we have these magic names you know so uh, whenever whenever we have a hook invoke all user login and then we'd be passing in the user account user login is the hook name that we have to decide just like here dollar module is our own is the module that were you know would be implementing this hook the dollar hook is the name that we decide so for you for this user login hook the function name would be your module underscore the hook name your module underscore user login and it would be getting uh, the user account as the argument. And for if we are invoking uh, our hook from all the modules, we'd be doing, uh, we'd be needing to uh, call this function from the module handler class. Uh, this again does the same thing: function module underscore hook name. Uh, this is the event. Uh, this is the function the regarding the alter hooks. Uh, alter function from the uh, module handler object so this again does the same thing uh, with this again does the same thing from you know the same way we would be in d7 we would be needing to uh, call the drupal alter function here and we would be needing to call the alter function from the uh, module handler object and then pass into it uh, the array of data or context whatever we want to alter and regarding the uh, order of execution of hooks in 
D8, it's again implementing the same, exposing the same hook module implement salter, which, uh, you know, has the array of uh, implementation of all the, which has the array that has all the module names as keys that are implementing our hook, uh, and then the hooks get uh, executed in the same order. So to uh, alter the execution of hooks in D8, we would simply be, we'd again be needing to, uh, in, you know, implement this hook, hook module implement salter. So how to, uh, you know, again, how to alter if we had a, an array of data and we wanted to, we wanted other module developers to uh, alter our data, we'd be needing to call this alter function pass in our, uh, you know, the uh, name of that hook that we'd want to, uh, you know, expose and then pass in data as well. This is how we are exposing hook views data alter in D8. We basically have, we basically call the alter function of the module handler. So summary, uh, if you are, uh, you know, the basic question is if you, we should be going uh, with hooks or events. If you're writing your custom module, I think uh, we should definitely be, if you need to expose something, if you need to uh, allow uh, other module developers to hook into your system, we should definitely uh, fire an event. And there's a saying that we should, uh, you know, for better experiences, we should log everything and trigger every trigger an event for everything. So if you're interacting with or altering core, subscribe to an event if one is fired. I have already mentioned some of the events that are available. If not, I don't see too many options for us. We still have to go the hook way. Uh, for configuration and admin forms, just like I said, hook block info, hook block uh, configure, hook block save, and stuff like that. We have plugins and tagged services as well. And uh, now I think uh, I'd be going for a simple demo. Uh, we'd be... Uh, uh, subscribing to a few events uh, in D8 and we'd be, uh, you know, creating our event for a form submit and then we'd be uh, executing some silly code while we have subscribed to that event. So basically, I have a uh, I have a simple site. Uh, I have a simple controller written for this uh, page. Uh, it returns a render array. Uh, I also have this config form. There are a few fields that. Uh, I have. So in the code section, uh, I have these, I have these two modules, config form that is, uh, you know, create, that is responsible for creating my config form and the form that is available that I just showed. And I also have uh, this event, this event demo module that is, that would be subscribing to a few events. So first we can, uh, you know, look into, you know, as I said, to subscribe to an event, we'd be uh, needing to have our own, uh, you know, service, the event subscriber class. Uh, how we can define it is here uh, in the module.services.yml file. I have this uh, alter response class uh, declared as a service. It would be getting this logger factory as uh, an argument. Uh, this I have declared this as a dependency and uh, it would dependency would be injected by the container into my class and I have tagged it with the event subscriber tag. So uh, this is my alter response uh, class basically uh, uh, implementing the event subscriber interface and then implementing the get subscribed events method from that interface and then returning an array of, uh, you know, various events that we can subscribe to. I have, uh, you know, currently commented out all these events so we could, you know, uncomment one by one and check what happens. I have for a kernel event uh, response, sorry, kernel event request. 
I have a function logging demo that is here. Uh, we'd be subscribing to kernel event request. So this would be happening for every request that our site makes. I have I am currently uh, fetching the path from the request object that uh, we are visiting, and I'd be, uh, you know, uh, I'd be logging that path into the Drupal logs. So how we would be logging that uh, with the help of the dependency injection, uh, uh, the injected injected logger factory object uh, would be you know helping us to uh, log the path so let me just clear cache and let me just refresh this page so we make a request and then let's check logs you can see uh, our config form was visited and then reports and then this current page db logs was visited we can actually change this method change this uh, to better check if it's executed and then i can refresh this to make another request and then check the logs this page was visited uh, just now so i also have uh, we also have this you know uh, we can also have config event save uh, to do something. We can also, you know, determine uh, the. We can also set the priority for uh, various events uh, from callables to be executed. We'd also be uh, subscribing to the kernel event response that uh, gets fired uh, for every time when a response is displayed to the user. Demo response function would be. I don't think I yes I have it would be we'd be getting the response object and then we'd be setting uh, content on our response object to this basically uh, uh, removing all the content from the response object and passing in a simple uh, string to it I would need to clear cache again so for every request I should get a simple string so we can actually change the string and check if it is basically coming from here only so this is this now uh, as I said, uh, you know, I have this configuration form. I can also, you know, to um, I am currently the config form is coming from this module. I have a form. I have a few fields declared in this form, and I also have a submit a uh, handler for this form. I am storing the values for, uh, from this uh, from these fields into the configuration. Uh, before that I am exposing I am firing an event and I am letting other modules to subscribe to my event and then alter the data that gets submitted to the configuration so basically I have this event demo class that is already defined the event demo class is here event demo class extends event so it would basically have the disp access to dispatch function by which it can dispatch the uh, event and then I have some uh, getter and setters for the configuration that it needs to alter that I am, uh, want other module developers to alter. So I have this my module events class here which should be defining the constant for my event that I'd be exposing. The unique name for my event would be event uh, demo dot form. So to uh, subscribe to this uh, event I would need an event listener that would be subscribing to this event so I have subscribe I have this alter response subscribe to this event as well uh, I have this alter config function with a priority of zero this alter config function would be uh, basically changing getting the configuration uh, you know getting the value of the text field and then setting it to I won't show really so 
I would need to clear cache since I uh, am subscribing to a new event. So I have this, uh, I can change it, uh, I was altered, I can change the video field and then save the configuration and then it would basically, you know, uh, override the value that I had submitted in the submit function and that I am overriding in my custom module. I can change it here as well to check if it is coming from here only. and I can submit my form. So this is the method, uh, this is the value that I'm getting. Now to, uh, you know, explain uh, the priorities thing as well, I can have this another function, I can, uh, yeah. So I can basically, you know, subscribe to an event from the uh, unique name as well and also from the you know the, the constant as well so I have these two functions subscribing to the same event uh, alter config with a priority of uh, zero so I can just comment it out I have these two functions alter config again and config again alter config and alter config again subscribing to the same event with a different priority so with the higher priority of 10, the alter config function would be executing first. This would be executing first and setting the value to this. And then uh, the alter config again function would be executing and then it would be setting the value to this. So once I submit this form, uh, we should get the previous value. Well, so this is explains the uh, this explains the priority thing as well. And this uh, information about the contribution sprints. Uh, evaluate my session if you think it was helpful questions if any no question like i said uh like I said, uh, it de really depends upon, I mean, because it would require, uh, you know, some effort to replace all of the hooks with, you know, events. But then it really depends upon the effort that uh, the community could provide, you know, to take that initiative forward. Uh, I mean, I don't... There are issue queues in Drupal D.O that have, you know, that, you know, wherein the conversations are going on whether to which what all hooks need to be replaced first and then uh, you know with the plans further so we can definitely check issue queue and figure that out So basically, uh, you uh, don't, you don't, uh, uh, you would have to go to the, you know, uh, event object, the, uh, sorry, uh, you would have to go to the event class to figure that out. Once you have, um, you know, if your, subs your method is subscribing to multiple events, you would have to somehow do a check uh, about what event is it is receiving and then, you know, plan your actions accordingly. Any other questions? Well then, thank you for your time and thank you for coming.